Revelation. So we are going to Titus chapter 1, one. verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But un unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. One of the things I notice is when you're dealing with born-again Christians, there is a God-mindedness, God-conscience. We are aware, you know, we're in his word, we're in his presence, and we're very much aware the Holy Spirit has sensitized us to what's right and gives us the desire to line up with what's right. But there are some born-again Christians that still live very carnally. And they can tend to be very argumentative. They can start an argument out of somebody asking if they lace their shoes so they wouldn't trip on themselves. And they could take that as a major slap in the face and start an argument out of it. It comes from old baggage. And a lot of times God begins to reveal to many people who do not deal with their issues that there is a level of rage in certain parts of their lives. And as a result of rage... Here's another one. Insecurity. Here's another one. Fear. Here's another one. Pride. <laughs> yeah. Those four main ingredients can churn up some volcano eruptions that can spoil the feast of charity, no matter how beautiful the celebration, because we are tripping over our own personal issues. When you're in a situation where you're dealing with a person who's argumentative, for those of you who are not, for those of you who may have enough self-control to think before you open your flap, <laughs> a good practice is to pray in your heart while the person is getting upset. And while you're praying, whisper, I bind that spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. Because you can see it's not necessary. It's not warranted. But whatever you do, don't tango with them. Don't do the dance. You do not want to go there. There are some people you can almost classify as what God refers to as a fool. Don't argue with a fool. Many of you need to read the book of Proverbs. It will teach you all of that. Do not engage in a dispute with a fool. I don't care how intelligent, how educated, or as some say, how educated they may be. The bottom line is a fool is a fool is a fool. You never engage with a fool. And the reason is because the spirit behind that fool will suck you in. And before you know it, you have lowered yourself to their level. And you have brought your Savior to an open shame. When you find yourself coming at odds with brothers and sisters in Christ or with unbelievers on the workplace. You have to back up and take a minute and get yourself together in order to know what to do. There are times God will tell you, don't answer the question, don't acknowledge the statement, don't defend yourself in the face of that insult. Keep your mouth shut. You be quiet, you step back, and let me fight this battle, and I will fight this battle for you and will vindicate you. But you 
must keep your mouth shut. The battle is the Lord's, not yours. See, these battles become yours when you get caught up in how you're going to look in front of everybody. Renee's making a fool out of me. I ain't going to let her do that. I'm not having it. So you sit there and give Renee a big old fat piece of your mind. No, no. God is saying, I don't care what they say. You may feel humiliated, but I will glorify you if you keep your mouth shut. Time will tell the truth. And when the truth comes out, they're going to be finding a rock to hide under because you're going to be the one coming out smelling like a rose, even by the way you handled it. See, a lot of times we don't understand. We don't get what's really going on. We don't get how Satan tries to stir up strife. Satan is the author of confusion. God is not. Everything with God is decent and in order. So, my question to you is, are you going to use self-control that the Holy Spirit gave you? Are you going to be temperate? Hmm? Or are you going to have a hot temper? Which do you prefer? How do you desire to express yourself? Through temperance or temper? Because I'm going to tell you, strife brings about a whole lot of mess. There's a scripture that says, the root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and many thereby be defiled. Which means, if you're holding little resentments, and little attitudes, and you don't want to be around somebody and you don't want to talk to somebody and you don't want to you don't want to even have them in your midst you'd rather just keep them out of everything that has anything to do with what you're involved in and they walk in the room and you get all bound up something's wrong something is wrong you have got to ask god like sasha said don't point your finger at them. You already know there are issues there. No. Right now, you're responsible for what you feel. You're responsible for what your thought pattern is about that person. So you have to ask God to go in there digging in your mess and show you what's really going on. <clears throat> I remember I was getting upset with Milton one time. Oh, yeah, surprise. Yeah, I, I actually got upset with him. But anyway, I was getting upset with him. And, and Milton asked me, baby, what's the matter with you? And I thought about it for a minute. And I said, you know what, Milton? I owe you an apology. I'm not even upset with you. I'm upset because I'm so disgusted with myself because I did something stupid and now I got to pay the penalty for it. And I'm so frustrated. I'm sorry, baby. He said, come on over here. I'll, pay, I'll pray for you. There are times when we have those little things going on. We got little fires going off in our gut. Ooh, help me, Lord. We have little fires going off in our gut that we want to put out. We're not doing a good job. We're worried about it. That's fear. We're ashamed of it. That's pride. Remember I mentioned those four things before. See, these little foxes, and it doesn't seem like a big deal, but they will affect your whole temperament. They will affect your attitude big time. And that's the reason why we have to watch those things. We have to constantly evaluate ourselves. Because if we don't, and we let our mouths fly in the wind, based on what's brewing in our hearts secretly, we will end up hurting people all the time. 
we will make them feel bad about themselves. We will make them feel like retreating. We will make them uncomfortable. We will bind them up, tie them up in knots. And sometimes humiliate them based on those little sparks, flames, and, and, and fires that are burning inside of our gut. And I ain't talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about those little secret attitudes, those little hidden fears, those hidden insecurities. When your little skeletons get to rattling in your closet and you don't want anybody to hear them, attitude starts rising higher and higher because now you got to cover yourself. You don't want everybody to know how bad you handle your money. You don't want everybody to know how bad you cussed somebody out the other day. You don't want anybody to, to get a wind of that, how you blew it. You don't want anybody to know your little hidden secrets. So when somebody starts dabbling in that yard close to your little buried spots, those little burial areas where you got your little bones hidden, you, you rev up, don't you? You get all reared up and get all hot up under the collar and you get defensive. You got to watch that. See, things like that don't just come. Boy, I feel, I feel like I'm struggling, y'all. Y'all pray for me. Woo! Hmm. I'm struggling physically as well as spiritually. I don't feel that hot, to be honest with you. But listen, what you have to do is be aware of what's going on inside of your heart. As Matt and I were talking about before everybody else got online, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Knowing the truth, facing the truth, facing the music, Dealing with what's really going on in here. That's what gets you free. That's what gets you free. You hear me? Dealing with me. Not them. Me. If Jeanette makes me mad because of something she said, I got to find out why that made me angry. Not just that it made me angry. She may not have said anything wrong. But it hit me the wrong way. Why? You never know. A question like that to God could bring you hours of deliverance. And those issues won't bother you anymore. Well, that's one of the biggest questions. People always say, don't question God. No, question God when it comes to your heart. Do it all the time. You'd be surprised how many answers you'll get and how much healing and deliverance you'll get and how you'll find your temperament is steadily going down, leveling off, getting more and more stable. You're not getting so, so shaken by stuff. You're not getting so rattled. The more you take that question, why, Lord, why? Do I react like that? Why does that get up under my skin? Why does she get on my last nerve? It could be a number of reasons. It could be pride, competition, jealousy, insecurity, fear, fear of what man thinks of you, self-consciousness, I mean, the list goes on ad infinitum. And it's all related to the flesh. But God can fix it. The potter wants to put you back together again. We all get upset over things. We all do. But I bet you, nine times out of ten, there's an issue underlining that temperament. There's an issue underlying that reaction. There's an undercurrent going on there that somebody's not dealing with. And every time something hits, goes against that current, all attitudes start to flare up. 
Mm, if we're not careful, Jack will jump out the box. So, my response to that is, please, this is my word of exhortation or admonishment. Please get in the habit of asking God to show you what's going on inside of you. In any area where you or bugged, or irked, or frustrated, or bothered. Ask God why. You'd be surprised some of the goodies he'll show you. And some of them you'll be shocked when he gives you the answer. You'll almost want to argue with him. I don't see that. Yeah, but he does. So ask him, because he knows. Amen? God bless you. And you will see that you, as he heals those areas and reveals them to you so that you have a better understanding, you will find yourself giving in to those inclinations less and less often. God bless you. I hope that helps. We all, God helps us walk through this life and he will take us by the hand and show us the way if we only keep asking him. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path.